Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, December 6, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. The DA today published a great diary with an update to his 1768.py tool. That's the tool that's used to analyze Cobalt Strike configuration. Now, Traditionally, it uh, was only able to deal with the configuration from the Cobalt Strike beacons. Uh, but thanks to the update that uh, Diddy put together in version 0020, it's now able to actually get the runtime configuration that's stored on the heap. So that's basically what the CC++ code uh, creates and is able to parse it. The tool will look for the configuration, will extract the information and then represent it. Diddy has a little sort of demo in the diary that goes over how to use this particular tool and uh, what the output will look like. But you'll, for example, get the IP address where the data is being sent to uh, URLs, user agents and such uh, being used uh, by uh, this uh, particular Cobalt Strike configuration. So create information to then uh, go back and uh, figure out what systems were exactly affected uh, by this compromise and to just uh, learn more about how this particular install of Cobalt Strike was configured. And talking about uh, good blog posts, CISA has a nice uh, write-up uh, with details regarding some recent attacks involving cold fusion. The vulnerability being addressed here is not terribly new, I think. March was when it was released. Exploits were available uh, pretty easily soon after the vulnerability became known and the patch was released. But, uh, well, uh, still, a uh, cold fusion is not necessarily the easiest thing uh, to patch. Lots of dependencies, depending on uh, what software you run on top of it. So uh, good here for CISA to actually walk us through how some of these exploits work and how this particular vulnerability is being taken advantage of. Always a huge fan of people actually talking openly about compromises like this. Because I think that's how we all learn how to better detect these attacks, even if you're not running Cold Fusion. I would still take a look at this particular post because uh, similar techniques are certainly used uh, with a variety of sort of... In particular, it sticks out yet again that a web shell is then being sort of uh, uploaded as the ultimate payload in order to establish a bridgehead in the particular network. Recognizing web shells, recognizing unauthorized changes uh, to the documents in your web application is really important. And if you're able to get a handle on this, uh, it'll help with a large number of different vulnerabilities uh, that your web applications may be exposed to. Let's take a look at a couple other vulnerabilities you should be aware of. First one affects the ATOS uh, Unify OpenScape. Uh, this is part of sort of one of those unified communication solutions, uh, voice over IP and all in one. Sec Consult, who originally discovered the vulnerability back in September, has a good and a quite detailed write-up about the nature of this vulnerability. It's... Uh, argument injection of vulnerability and with that an attacker is able to either get unauthenticated remote code execution or authentication bypass CVE 2023-6269. They have an example how to gain unauthenticated SH root access with this vulnerability. Now, this is an HTTP request that then gets you basically to the SSH access patch now, given that a uh, vulnerability is already being discussed in that much detail. For the second part of vulnerability, uh, the uh, bypassing of the web interface log as administrator, uh, basically when you just want to do everything via the web interface, well, uh, they removed the proof of concept code here. So you can yourself buy maybe a little bit time uh, by blocking SH access to these systems. And then we also have updates for Extreme Networks, Extreme 
XOS. Uh, the most severe vulnerability here is CVE 2023-43-121, which is an unauthenticated root file read disclosure vulnerability that discloses password hashes for the device. Other than that, uh, some approach escalation and cross-site scripting, as well as an arbitrary file write as root via a read-only user, so really more a privilege escalation vulnerability again. Well, this is it for uh, today. Did you like a story that I covered in particular? Did I miss something? Uh, please let me know. You know any feedback is always helpful. Uh, just use the contact form on the website. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.